What's up, everybody? So I was going to do that. We were all going to do this podcast like two days ago, but um, I got wrapped up in a bunch of stuff. Timing was off. Uh, Gas and Maya died along the way, and we just really couldn't get everything together. But we're here now, and we're going to be doing a couple of topics, just a, an hour-long podcast, really just sitting down and discussing the Saints. I got Johnny. Say what's up, Johnny. What's up, Johnny, or the Saint <laughs> Hub, or my editing account. Uh, most people know me as the crazy guy from the Discord or Nasa Streams. I got Evan in the bottom left or Mark Four. What's up, guys? How you doing? <laughs> and then we got 44, the legendary, or Noah. What's up, y'all? Y'all doing, man? All right, so who's going to start it off? Because I, I, no one really planned for this. Well, you want to start it off? I know you're so beautiful. Glad you started off. All right, so the first thing we're going to be talking about are the two biggest free agent acquisitions that we got, which was Malcolm Jenkins and Emmanuel Sanders and how they're really going to impact the team. <laughs> Okay, I'll start then. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was waiting for somebody to pick up. <laughs> I don't – oh, do you want – were you talking? I'm sorry, I didn't know. I was trying to get somebody to pick up. and then. And... Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'll talk first. Mm -hmm. So, we finally addressed the wide receiver position after years of failing with Traquan Smith because he's terrible. And we went out and got the veteran, Emmanuel Sanders, probably the best wide receiver in free agency other than Robbie Anderson. And this will very free up our offense because Michael Thomas is not our only threat. We have an actual wide receiver, too. And Trey Kwan can go against CB3s, which may give him some advantage. But then again, he'll probably get injured, so it won't matter. <laughs> uh, be hitting the weight room, get them legs up. He'll die. Think, what was it, his ankle last year? Yeah, something yeah I, think it was, I think it was his ankle or something like that. It's like a high but, ankle sprain or some BS like that? No. Because how many games did he play? Like five? I know he played – didn't he get hurt in the Rams game? Or am I, am I, am I confused? That was Kirkwood. That was Kirkwood? I don't remember yeah, when he got Yeah, I think hurt. it was a Seattle game. I think it was the next oh, no, game. Keith Kirkwood. I think it was one of those injuries that happened, but, like, we didn't see it. It just yeah. came out in the injury report one day. I, I don't remember. But, yeah, I feel like getting someone else but Michael Thomas is definitely going to take our offense to the next level, especially when we've been struggling. Like, Ted Ginn Jr., he was supposed to be the fix, but he <laughs> Well, can't. he's 37 and dead. He's an old man. Traquan can develop. I just don't think he's developing the way that Sean wants him to. I think maybe if he was put in a different offense, you know, maybe we get a pick for him or something. Or if he just goes out in free agency, tests the waters, and see what he can find. But uh, he, he seems like a good receiver, you know. I mean, he was pretty good at UCF. You know, nothing special, but nothing, you know, bench. But bench I just think – I just think once he – I just think once he finds his fit, you know, he'll be a decent two, three receiver. Definitely not a one, though. I don't, I don't think he's got the material for a mm -hmm. one. Oh, not at all. You going to say anything? Thomas over here. <laughs> Noah's spaced out. <laughs> Doesn't even know where he is right listen, now. Listen, guys, I think the, the pickup on Emmanuel Sanders is obviously one of the better decisions we've made over the last couple of years. Um, we got two of the more elite wide receivers in the NFL now. Um, Emmanuel Sanders, I still feel like has a lot left to prove inside of him. Mm -hmm. um, I know he came from you know, Pittsburgh and Denver. Then uh, San Francisco, now he's here. Uh, I feel like he's going to be a great compliment to Michael Thomas. We're not only going to be focused on Michael Thomas getting the ball to him, and he's not going to be our only source of receiving. Mm -hmm. And what that was reminding me of whenever we were constantly trying to target Michael Thomas was Jimmy Graham, whenever we had Jimmy Graham. Because mm -hmm. when Breeze would try to target him constantly, defenses would catch up to that, and they'd shut his ass out. Yep. Exactly. And that's, that's, a, we had a couple of those problems throughout the last two years where when Michael Thomas was eliminated from the game, the offense went stagnant and that that's something that we could hopefully avoid going forward. I don't know. He got up, but yeah, adding <laughs> him right, yeah, is definitely a good move. My, my only problem with Sanders though, is like, I don't want him to get off to the start that Jared Cook got off to last year, you know, where he starts mm, slow like, and then yeah. picks up. I want him to, because when he went to San Francisco, some, one of the San Francisco coaches said that he picked out and looked very fast. And he, you know, learned all the plays and learned all the routes he needed to run. And I was hoping he could do that with us, especially since the amount of time he has to play until next season. Because I really don't see him starting much pre or playing much preseason at all. 
you know, because mm-hmm. they're not going to injure their wide receiver too as they finally got one. Especially at but his that's, Yeah, that's really my own concern is, you know, if he, if he starts out slow, you know, and then picks up that, you know, it might be too late for us and then Drew's going to have to then we come back that next Austin. year. What? Jared Cook. Then we got yeah. Jared Cook. Jared Cook's going to be nasty next yeah. season. Jared Cook's going to be fire next season. I'm just glad he got his chemistry with Drew down. Like, yeah, he started yeah definitely. Because when, when the season first started, I was like, oh, like Jared Cook was like a really good signing. And then he started to come in, you know, and blossom a little bit. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is definitely worth it. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, if it doesn't, if he doesn't get knocked out in the game against San Francisco, who knows where we, who knows? Oh, 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 why did you remind me of that, dude? He was going, oh, my God. What, he had two touchdowns early, and then big. he. They had no answer for him, dude. We would have put up 70 if he didn't get hurt. He's that a really good so dude, much. though, just uh, completely off topic. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> the, one thing, the one thing about Jerry Cut that bothers me is that man has a huge body, but his head-to-body ratio does not fit. <laughs> 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 this is it. This is it. This is just, this is just me, my mind being retarded. He totally does have a weird head-to-body ratio. Uh, but I mean, that man can catch a ball, and that man can put it in where it needs to be, and that's all that matters. Yeah, this new look Saints offense, dude. You got Drew Brees, uh, Michael Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, Traquan Smith, Jared Cook, Alvin Kamara, Latavius Murray. The whole topic, offensive line is still top best in the league. Like I don't. It's not really new though. It's just like one element, but it was so key. That exactly. Just look like a whole new team. Exactly. Just that one player. He was like the missing piece this entire time. And now we don't necessarily. I was gonna say now we don't even have to go uh, first round wide receiver. We can go Mm-mm. for secondary. Yep. Especially with how yeah. deep this wide receiver class is, or this draft class is, and wide receivers. We definitely do need to draft the receiver though, because literally he's thirty three. So we're gonna be in this problem in two years from now, and then we won't have Jesus Christ. To save us. But the difference we'll between to. having to draft a wide receiver <laughs> in the first round because we don't have Emmanuel Sanders, we can draft a wide receiver in the third round and just yeah, let him develop. That's what I'm thinking. Like, we, or have, we can hope to God Jamar Chase falls to a deep first round pick. <laughs> next year. But we're drafting Jalen Hurts, baby. That's a – no. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. No. I want Look at Noah. Go. No. He looks so uh, <laughs> No. Yes. So, do not need a quarterback first. Round. A topic, a topic I, I don't want to touch you guys oh, third? is um, – Yeah. I was about to say, he's not even a first-round quarterback. Yeah, a topic I, I don't want to touch you guys is after, like, the season we just had, what was your thoughts on, I guess, Latavius Murray for Mark Ingram. Like, did Latavius look at, live up to the Mark Ingram legacy or, you know, I'm gonna give him wish you could have been let, better? Let, let Noah take this one first. What do you think? So, uh, whenever we got Latavius Murray – after we had uh, let go of Mark Ingram, let him go to Baltimore, and we got let's say Miss Murray. Um, I was first a little suspicious with the chemistry. How would he fit in? Would he be able to do the roles that Mark Ingram was able to fill whenever he was here? I felt, I feel, I, I feel honestly like Latavius Murray has done a lot, and I feel like he fits well in this system. I feel like he has potential to um, grow with this team and with this offense. Um, and honestly, whenever I, whenever I think about Mark Ingram's role, listen, when it comes to finishing games and winning championships, I mean, listen, in the NFC championship game, I, I know, I know what happened. I know what happened. I know, Mm -hmm. but whenever he ran that ball and lost six yards, that was a key part in the game that forced Drew Brees to throw that pass and have it intercepted. And uh, the whole drive by the number. I, I, I was there, man. I was there, bro. It was, oh. it was hard to watch, man. Yeah. What were you going to say, Johnny? Vontavis Murray looks so good that he almost made Alvin Kamara look like a bad running back. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's true. <laughs> you it's are true. so right. How many 100 yard rushing games did? And it's not saying. I said Kamara is replaceable, but he's also not. Like, you'll never have that elite dynamic playmaker. <laughs> what I'm saying is our run system is so good that mm-hmm. even someone like Latavius Murray, who was rejected by the Minnesota Vikings and was seen as, like, nothing, can thrive in it. And he's a great running back, but, like, 
he's nowhere near elite. And I feel like we don't – I love Kamara, but if we're going to have to risk Ryan Ramchek, who hasn't given up a sack in God knows how long, I want Ryan Ramchek. And oh, I love yeah. Kamara, but Latavius well, I mean, Murray looks like a different animal out there. It's also good that we picked up uh, Lattimore and Ramchek's fifth-year options. So, you know, we can mm-hmm. worry about Kamara this year and then those two the next year. So, at least we have a little bit of breathing room with them if we want to, you know. Yeah, cap or whatever. I really, really, I was, I was kind of taken back uh, by Latavius Murray this year. It was almost there were more games than not that I was watching and saying, "Why haven't we given Latavius the ball more? Why hasn't Latavius had X amount of carries? Why has he only run the ball six times for sixty-six yards?" <laughs> it just pissed me off more than not. Uh, whenever Kamara got hurt, and you, I think it was like the Cardinals game and the Chicago game. He played absolutely fantastic. It was insane. He looked oh, like a start. Yeah, yeah, Latavius. He looked like a starting caliber first running back, and, and he played like it, and he showed that he can be that. So, um, it really, depending on how Kamara's contract situation goes, I don't really know what the deal is going to be. We do have a lot of players to resign, but Latavius definitely shocked me as far as being a – a really, really, really solid running back. But like Johnny and uh, Noah said, that offensive line, dude, I don't know who wouldn't be able to run behind it, in all honesty. Latavius kind of gave me, like, a little bit of vibe of, like, both Mark and Alvin. Cause, like, in the Texans game, he had that 30-yard touchdown. So you knew that he had oh, the burners yeah. to – Oh, yeah, that was our first touchdown was... of the season. Yes, it put was. It through, like, he had the burners to put it through, like, Kamara, but he could also punch it in the goal line like Mark Ingram. So yep. He's a very both. dynamic man. Exactly. Very dynamic. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wish I wish he could fix a little bit of receiving, but not not much really too fast. Aside from personality, I didn't really feel myself missing Mark Ingram this season. Like no, I, I, missed, nah, I missed I missed nah. his personality, like seeing him. Yeah, really no, the, the, the so race, once he left to Baltimore, I know I know the team must have felt that hit hard. Yeah, <laughs> I, I missed the personality, but Latavius filled the hole as far as being a really good power back goes, I, I think. Honestly, after, like, week three or week four, I kind of forgot about Mark Ingram on that team. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. It's just – it's like a – Yeah, I mean, you want to go play – you want to go play a team for 500000 more dollars, you go ahead, you know. <laughs> but, it was like two, one or two million. Oh, Murray's 30? Oh, yeah, he, 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 he's pretty up there. Yeah. I didn't realize I that. thought he got drafted in, like, 2014. 2015 or something like that. It says 2013 here, sixth round. Oh, wow. That's when he got drafted by Oakland. I thought he was like 2015 or something. Oh, my God. I forgot he was on Oakland. Yeah. Dang, wait. So he got drafted pretty old. He was drafted when he was like 24, 23. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's, it's not like – these athletes coming out of 2020 will be old now because of goddamn it's corona. Not, not like Brandon yeah. Whedon old. Yeah. Oh God. Oh, God. Dude, that guy is he like up. seven years or what was it older than Rogers? I saw some <clears throat> crazy stat. Crazy stat about what? Whedon's being like drafted. Rogers being drafted before him, but Whedon's like seven years older. Yeah, he got drafted crazy old. That was a random topic, but I like talking about that. I feel like that's something that needs to be talked about more. Is how yes. well Latavius played in our system last year. Who brought that up? Carries. Evan did. <laughs> it was so random. All right. I, mean, I just I wanted y'all's opinions and, on what you know you thought Latavius brought to the table as long as our offense. And and listen, um, with the whole Mark Ingram versus Latavius Murray thing, you look at the two seasons that we had last season and this season. We were both 13, 13 and three in both seasons. Um, obviously we didn't get the ultimate goal in either season either. Um. But Mark Ingram in the playoffs last year, in my opinion, didn't really show up. Mm-mm. He wasn't the guy that, that he was in the regular season. Therefore, Latavius Murray coming in in his first year and doing what he's done, I mean, you got to think it's only going to gain better chemistry from here, from here on out. Yeah, yeah. I think, I, the, I, memory of, I think the memory of them – Being back in the playoffs, the playoffs last year, I think that kind of just got to some of the players, and then that's why they wow, did they it really are team. similar. I mean, like both thirty, both power backs, they really are like they're pretty similar. My problem with 
our offense all year last year was the blatant refusal to run the ball. It pissed me off so bad. Like, when we go look at the wild card game versus Minnesota, we had Alvin Kamara. He had seven carries for 21 yards. Latavius had five carries for 21 yards. Taysom Hill had four carries for 50 yards. He was our leading rusher. That's why we lost. Like, this entire season, the refusal to run the ball has been my issue. Oh, and also frozen. I'll take over. What's up? Oh, he's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. What is going on? Yeah, I'm going to have to edit that out. I don't know why. (laughs) As soon as I opened Google Chrome, everything went down the drain. (laughs) Continue, Noss. Continue. I was just saying, what did I say? What did did y'all last hear me say? How the Saints refused to run the ball. Oh, yeah. I was talking about the the Minnesota playoff game where Alvin Kamara had uh, seven carries for 21 yards. Latavius had five carries for 21 yards, and Taysom Hill had, like, four carries for 50 yards. I just – only running the ball between (laughs) Kamara and Latavius 12 times in a playoff game, I I don't understand it. I really hope we iron the kinks out with that next year because – I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. But if it's not working and Sean does trust the – in your guys – Oh, God. Opinion. The, I love Drew, but My he was initial. booty butt cheeks that game. He needed to be better. And I understand we should have ran the ball more. But three yards to carry right on. So I don't know who needs to run it. Taste some? Actually, that's probably who should have ran it. No, he was, should have just fed Latavius. He was averaging okay, like five Latavius, yards with carry. But so whatever is, it's, you do have to understand that, I mean, I at least in my, when I knew, remember that, but I remember. I'm saying remember a bunch, but I just understand where Sean was coming from. I trust Drew, but he was ass. But, yeah, I agree. <laughs> but that's it. That's just exactly it. You cannot put all of your eggs in one basket. You can't. You cannot do that. So, saying, you know what, Drew, go win us the game. That It's worked plenty of times, but it's not going to work every single time. Uh, we cannot okay. force our – what what was he at that – 39 at that point? 39, 40-year-old quarterback going out there – Yo, go win us the game. Like that, we can't do that. Oh, I to be more dynamic. Oh, yeah, yeah man. You, you look at the 2017 year, man. Matter of fact, the 2018 year as well, man. We've done nothing but been balanced. And mm-hmm. the three years when we went seven and nine, we have been so pass heavy. I – We have been so pass heavy. And then we finally gain a balance in 2017 with Kamara and Ingram, of course. Um, but still, it's a balance, and you saw, you saw Drew Brees throwing the ball like 40% of the time. Mm-hmm. He did not have the stats that he would usually have, and you were just like, wow, we're winning, and Drew Brees is not even putting up that much. I think like 2018 20- was like the first time, and I don't even know how many years, where he didn't throw for over 4,000 yards. Yeah. Crazy. Just need and that then all of a sudden, we, we go back to what we were doing that used to lose us games, and that's abandoning the run game. <laughs> and teams are used to that all around the league. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Once Breeze starts throwing, you already know what to do. Mr. GM Paglia, do you have anything to add? <laughs> I honestly just like – I mean, you guys basically said it all. You know, I really got to say much. Uh, I had to say something. I just you – know, I hope Coach will realize that, you know, we didn't run the ball as much. Um, we, I mean, we did run it a good amount, but we could have definitely ran it more times than others. Um, I think that now that he has a wide receiver too, he's going to be breaking out some of his old plays, you know, from like the 09, 2010 days. And I'm hoping that – I'm hoping that he can bring the spark to the offense that we haven't had the last three years because we've, we've had something, but there hasn't been that spark to actually set it off. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Like the – offense to take us to the Super Bowl because I feel like we've had a pretty good offense it's just yeah we have no we've we've had a good offense I just think that you know like I think there's a piece missing yeah 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 that'll set us apart from other teams and I just I hope that Emmanuel Sanders is that piece that we're looking for because you know Emmanuel Sanders has been a Super Bowl with the Pittsburgh Steelers he's been a Super Bowl with the San Francisco 49ers he's been the Super Bowl with Whatever other team you play, I cannot. He went to the school. Denver. 
Yeah, Denver. That's what it was. Denver and Pittsburgh, wow. Denver, and San Francisco. <laughs> and this could be his fourth opportunity. He could be the first player in history to have four teams to play the Super Bowl with four different teams. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, fingers crossed fingers for crossed. sure. For sure. Stop giving me disappointment here, Saints. Come on. I know. <laughs> okay. I, I'm just uh, now. Yeah, yeah, so- the- the thing you look at whenever we um we won the Super Bowl in 2009, what did we have in, during the playoffs? Not just the regular season, because obviously in the regular season, our offense is going to put up numbers and put up points. Mm-hmm. But when you look at what we had in the playoffs in 2009 compared to what we have these last couple of years, the offense these last couple of years just has not been – been what it has been Mm -hmm. I mean you look at the last three playoff games we scored 20 against Philadelphia 23 against the Rams and 20 against Minnesota when you look in 09 we were scoring 45 and 31 and we even started slowing that Philly game too we didn't really get much going until oh yeah we went down 14 to nothing and then Mm -hmm. had to end up coming back I I definitely agree with that it's just we haven't had the ability on offense to put the game away. And I don't I, – I really think that this wide receiver two addition is going to change that because we could not get anything going. When you go into the playoffs, you're no longer playing scrubs. There's not a single there, – there may be a, a team or two that's, you know, obviously not as good as the top <laughs> dogs, but you're not playing scrubs. They come to play football. Everybody's there for one goal – they're going to try to stop your biggest playmaker. And that biggest playmaker has obviously, literally obviously been Michael Thomas for the last two, three years. What they've done in the playoffs is they've made sure, you know what, triple, quadruple cover that guy if you have to. If we stop him, they can't do anything else, especially when we have the tendency to abandon the run. So I think adding a wide receiver number two could really add something that we just haven't had in order to put games away late in the season and in the postseason, maybe next season, hopefully, and maybe that could take us over the hump and bring us to the Super Bowl for God, first time in a decade. The thing that bothered me is once we signed Jared Cook, everyone was like, thank God, Drew's got another target. We can get some pressure off Mike. I seen some pressure off Mike, but I didn't see much, you know, and I was thinking like, okay, Jared Cook's a good signing, but all you really got to do is maybe – throw a linebacker on them and then have a safety, you know, yeah. have a safety cover the wide receiver too. And then everyone else kind of blankets Thomas. But now that we actually got Sanders, you know, it's like, okay, we actually have to focus on Sanders now because he's, he's the big deep threat that everyone's going to you know, worry about if we're too busy covering Mike Thomas over here doing the slant routes and the end routes and all that stuff. But I just hope that, I hope that we can get it done. Honestly, I know, I know we can, but we, we really got to work at it because the thing that bothered me last year was the penalties. The penalties were really – Oh, and it, dude. And it's not just Pete. Oh. Like, Pete, Pete – like, when I seen at least resign Pete, I was pissed. That moment. Do, bro, but, like, do I y'all can't, remember I can't the, all the, blame it on him. Do y'all remember the home Falcons game? <laughs> the Falcons yes. game in New Orleans? Yeah. Yes. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. That don't game – Don't even bring it up. It was even, so it annoying to watch. It, the penalty – oh, my God. Uh, at some point in time mm -hmm, at some point in time we were the most penalized team in the league last year I don't understand what the problem was every five seconds do you know how many times I heard them say illegal shift last year something that just kind of it hit me in the back of the head because like how does a team continuously commit illegal shift penalties and then you had holding penalties all day on 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 the offensive line um, which is why I wanted to cry when we signed Andrews P. I'm just hoping that now that he's completely healthy, that won't be a problem. Uh, the play that I look, look to every time that I bring up Andrews Pete, I posted on my Instagram, I'm pretty sure y'all seen it, was the one where Taysom Hill threw a touchdown to Alvin Kamara. I'm pretty yep. sure it was in the Eagles playoff game. I guess yeah, Philadelphia. I call, yeah. And I got a call back because – Holding offense. Pete. <laughs> Andrews Pete. And he looks all confused, like, I don't know what I did. <laughs> like, yeah. He was strangling that dude, but, I mean. The thing, the thing I like that Loomis did <clears throat> was, even though he signed Pete to that five-year contract, he also gave us a way out because Pete's getting roughly about 33 – Pete's getting 33 guaranteed. You know, like it's mm-hmm. happening. But after two to three years, if there's, you know, if there's something in, uh, you know, like you're not the long-term guard that we're looking for, we can we can they can let them go, you know they can say if you want to test for agent you know you're good but 
We don't well, he's we got do. the chemistry with who matters right now. I mean, we're trying to win a championship now because who knows? Oh, yeah, no, definitely right now we're trying to win. He knows the offense good. He knows the offense really well. But I'm saying, uh, like, the next three years, if they want to come to him and say, you know, you're not what we thought you were going to be or um, – there, there's a way there's a way out if, if need be there's a way out yeah i think a thing that a lot of people overlook is the bidding war that was going on between new orleans and kansas city for andrews pete which is oh, why yeah. They, yeah there was a bidding war going on between kansas city and new orleans as far as negotiating a contract with andrews pete goes which is why we gave him a five-year deal i think it was like a I'm not going to go if you guys don't extend me long term because he wanted to play in New Orleans. Well, after, after we signed him, uh, I think it was Adam Schefter put a tweet out that said, you know, it was from Andrews P saying, I want to be a New Orleans Saint my whole career. Yeah, he was not just forcing the hand at the long term deal, which is what we got mm-hmm. stuck in doing. I, I know it was an overpay, but from the perspective of Mickey Loomis, we have a 40 year old quarterback out there. Mm-hmm. So we need to protect him now and bring him back. But the thing is, is, is Andrews Pete the right guy to protect him? I don't maybe, think, like, maybe honestly, for, is he? maybe for a year or two, but like, I don't, I don't like that bad. Maybe I Drew, think. but like, once Drew retires, I don't see him. I don't see Andrews Pete being like the protector for oh, he's out. comes mm-hmm. in to replace him. I really do not think he's that bad. I think he has some kinks to work out, but I don't think like I know he's not Ryan Ramchek. We have to look at a lot of the offensive linemen in the league and they're all really shitty. Like yeah, there are a lot and of he's bad probably sadly a little bit above average, just a little bit in the slightest term. I know it was an overpay, but I'm not mad at that he's back because I think there's kinks to iron out. I know his pro football focus grade is horrid. It's a forty five. I just yeah <laughs> I, this the worst I've ever seen. But I really think – I think he can turn it around. I, I don't know why. I don't know. I mean, we did ask him to move position. Wasn't he drafted as a tackle? Yeah, he was. I don't know. Right guard? I don't know. I, I know study. left guard is not his natural position. I just think – I don't know. Maybe it's chemistry. <laughs> I think he'll turn it around. Don't know why. Call me crazy. I think he's not the only, I think the reason we took Pete back is because, you know, he knew the offense well. He can slide to tackle if, if you know, if Teron gets hurt, which happens to be every year, sadly. I don't know why, but yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, every year I see a tweet from him, this wasn't the year, you know, next year, 16 games, I would do my best. And then, just, you know, next year comes and he gets injured. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping for a 16-game season for him because him and Ram Jack are probably the top, arguably the top two tackles in the league, if not one of Oh yeah, they're, they're they're up there. I definitely agree with the whole protecting Drew Brees thing because he's old. Um, I think <laughs> really what it was was them trying to make sure they didn't create an unnecessary hole that didn't need to be there because Andrus Pete was actually one of the top guards on the market for some reason. So re-signing him made them, you know, look, we don't have to assess offensive guard in the draft. Uh, we don't have to go grab somebody that's a a like a, a street working bum and throw them in there. They, they really just wanted that blanket to where they don't have to go and try to find another person to put there. And cause if, if it doesn't go well and drew gets sacked more than 20, 30, 40 times, there's, there's a problem and he's very old could get hurt. Well, so. It's going to take him a while to learn the offense and get the playbook down. Mm-hmm. You know, what and kind of, get- what kind of protection they got to do. Other thing is we're going to have to get a new guard soon. Larry Warford is how old? 30. Oh, he's up. 35. So we're going to have to get. Now, the stupid thing is, why the fuck did we resign? I can curse, right? Yeah, you can curse. (laughs) Okay. Um, Why is Nick Easton on this team? Like, I think think he's a I think he's a good backup. Like, I, I don't think – I mean, he this could be caliber. This million backup, no! I know, I know, I know. Trust me, I, when, I seen, when I seen it, I was pretty pissed too. I think we should restructure his contract, if not this year, then next year. Um, if that doesn't work, then I say we should cut him. He was a Patrick signing. His name sounds like Edamame. Did I say Patrick? I meant panic. He was a panic signing. Yeah, that was well, – well, as well, soon as – No, 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 no. Uh, Easton. No. As yeah, no, Easton was definitely retired. Once, yeah, once under Boom, retired. Santa signing Nick Easton to what was it, a four-year, $20 million deal, I think? It was, it was a four-year, 24 
24. It's not that bad. He no, stepped no, in and played pretty bad. well last year. He played no, he, decent. He really did. I mean, you know, he wasn't the best. He wasn't, you know, great or anything special. But he definitely – he stepped up when we needed him to step mm-hmm. You know, I think Omame is a good Settle this. pickup. Um, what, do you, what are we settling? <laughs> to find official contract. Oh, yeah, I think it was – why it's, is he? It's, it's three years, twenty-four million, I think. Oh, shit. it is four years, two twenty-two point five million. And See, that's not reason, that bad. That is bad. He's not. He's a backup. Do you understand <laughs> how much offensive linemen? Dude, get I paid? get it. I get it. But they get actually, bank. Okay, I get it, but he's still funds. Go look at Andrews Pete's contract. Yeah, I know. He's, he's not that he's not that big of a step down to like years, half his money. He's seven and a half million. I'll, I'll go play left guard for the Saints that much money. <laughs> <laughs> and oh and sixteen. Oh nah. wow. <laughs> what else do we have to discuss? Malcolm Jenkins. Oh yeah. yeah. Jenkins. Take us off with that, Noah. Listen, so spot. <laughs> I'm indifferent about the uh, the decision. I Listen, I, I like Malcolm Jenkins. I've always been a, a fan of Malcolm Jenkins ever since we drafted him in 2009. Um, excellent safety. It's not necessarily his talent that I'm really picking apart here because he's gotten better over the years as we've seen him in Philadelphia. He was the leader of mm-hmm. that team, and we need that leadership here on this defense. But I just feel like he's still – he's so whipped from Philadelphia. Like, he just loves Philadelphia. Hey, Philadelphia, can we still be friends? I'm not sure if you follow him on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, but he, I see that. But he posted that, in, and Roman Harper in the comment section straight up told him his ass. Hey, man, they didn't pay you. Move on. Mm-hmm. You're with the Saints now, man. You're back where you started. I didn't really you know, like all, all these dumb Philly fans in the comment section. He's always an eagle at heart. And isn't, I didn't bother. started That's with us. Bother. Played a stint with Philadelphia and is coming back. I think his it's just like a it's like I don't I don't know how to put it. From a fan perspective, it's kind of like really? <laughs> like really? Especially when they kicked him to the curb like that. Um I, I don't know how I would, you know. Maybe he was talking to the, the fans more than the organization. Probably. Eagles fans are trash, though. So I don't really That's know. What I'm <laughs> Eagles yeah, fans are pieces of garbage. MX trash, but he sees that he's played there seven years and they're screaming his name. Oh, I've heard, all... bro, have you seen EDP's videos on Malcolm Jenkins? <laughs> he <Everybody>. hates him. <laughs> I've, I've seen, I've known EDP since 2010. Mm hmm. He hates him. Before, before he fucking blew up and got all these subscribers, I actually talked to him through the phone before. Really? That's crazy. I swear. On <laughs> Uvu. Back crazy. when Uvu was a thing. Back when the Uvu. video chat. Oh, oh that's oh crazy. God, bro. Uh, that brings back it memories. It was 2012. Uh-huh. Wow. You know you know, he, was, he, was, he was cool. He was cool. He was real cool. But then he started getting all these subscribers, and then he – he flooded the toilet and Chipotle and all this other stuff. <laughs> so he, now he's all famous. So nah. yeah, yeah, I feel you. Um, I I love the Malcolm Jenkins signing yeah. simply from the perspective. Like I cool. He he's hung up on Philadelphia. It's kind of gay, but I mean it's whatever. Um, I <laughs> I really think that love. as far the biggest <laughs> problem with Von Bell and I'll, I'll preach this until the day I die, was the fact that he can't cover a fly. He can't cover – he his coverage ability was extremely lackluster. He made up for it in the run game. Uh, he was a great run stopper, but I just didn't really <laughs> – Johnny has to answer the door. <laughs> <laughs> the thing – Anyway, the thing that I like about oh he was he was a he was bad in coverage. I didn't really um, enjoy his coverage ability whatsoever. Malcolm Jenkins is, as far as safeties go, elite in coverage. So that fixes that issue. He's not as great in the run, but we have someone named Chauncey. All right. So yeah, as I was saying, um, Von Bell just isn't that good in in. In coverage situations, he's good against the run. Malcolm Jenkins is a big step up as far as coverage goes, and that's what we've needed as far as, you know, our safeties go. I think Chauncey's going to look great in the slot again. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore, CB1, and then Janoris, CB2. That's, that's going to be a nice, uh, a nice secondary right there. Oh, and, and Marcus Williams, of course. Dude, Chauncey's 
ability to tackle in the open field honestly astounds me. Like that man has he you know, can uh, tackle in the open field too. Like and everyone, he's everyone, got the skills. everyone has that whole like you know how Marcus Williams the whole mini <clears throat> capitals miracle thing happened. Everybody when Chauncey Gardner Johnson's name is brought up, they think about him getting pushed off by uh, George Kittle. That's what oh my god! Yeah, that that was embarrassing. But he's it's George Kittle. He was he's yeah, ginormous. Sense. So okay. especially going up against Chauncey, who's you know, he's not that. I mean, he's a variety. pretty yeah. Especially compared to George Kittle, he's definitely smaller than him. But mm-hmm. George but Kittle's an absolute monster. You know, I mean, there's not much you can really do about that. You know, and so I, know, I remember some plays against us. It took like three or four dudes just to bring him down. Yeah, for you sure. Know, sometimes they didn't have to push him out of bounds because they couldn't bring him down. Oh, one of our dudes, I believe it was PJ Williams, had to hop on top of the man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Oh, God. Marcus the Williams pulled the face about? mask. Breakout Gardner play. Johnson got beat. Mm-hmm. And fucking P.J. Williams had to jump on top of him to get him down. That was ridiculous. Oh, my they were God. trying so hard. I felt so bad watching that happen. There's just nothing they could do about it. George, Fiddle pro- George Kittle probably got, like, the biggest confidence boost of his life after making the entire defense look like toddlers. Ugh. <sighs> Well, what's the next topic we're talking about? So we covered Emmanuel Sanders, Malcolm J. Oh, yeah, breakout candidate of next year. That's what we're going over, isn't it? And we're all picking a different yeah. player. So yeah, everybody's picking a different breakout candidate, just so we're clear. So who wants to start? I'll start. Okay, well, okay. no, let's start. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and, and pick a typical one. I'm going to say Jared Cook. He didn't get to finish a full season last year. He got hurt in the San Francisco game. Mm-hmm. Um, did he come back for that Colts game, or was he out for that Colts game? The game after he, he was out, wasn't he? He was out in the Colts game, if I remember correctly. It was I, like I, re- I do remember Josh Hill <laughs> catching a touchdown during that Colts game, and that Evan, probably would explain. not have happened if Jared was in the game. Well, I feel like the chemistry with Jared Cook is going to improve next year. Um, the most iconic play of Jared Cook's career, in my opinion, was that sideline catch against the Dallas Cowboys that he had mm, um, for the Green Bay. Bay Packers. That will always, like, until he tops that, that will be his play. Like, that's the play that I think about when I think of him. And I, I think he's going to come up in big times next year whenever it does come around. And um, I feel like he's going to improve. <laughs> Hi, dog. This is Chance. What's up, boy? Boy, baby. All right, Johnny, your turn or Evan's turn. Whoever wants to go, I'll go last. Johnny, so, go. Right. Noah uh, picked. Wait, one thing. Cook. I think that Bucks touchdown. Nos was even there for that. Oh, I was, bro. I was standing right above that, it. I was right above. I was in the corner of the end zone. Oh that, my god. That was yeah, nasty. That was, that was I need to go watch the highlights. I never got to see the TV version of that. I just oh, saw it. Just, he, he just looks like an animal. Um. But my player is Chauncey. Mm. I like saying his name. I don't know why. Um, I think he's going to break Chauncey? out because, one, that may, all the man does is work out, at least according to Instagram. <laughs> I mean, he is doing his weird rap career. It's terrible, but I support him. <laughs> um, Yo, Teron Armstead's rap career, though. That was fly. That was I think like Chauncey is going to He's going to work his ass off because he likes – I think he liked being a fourth-round pick because it put the ship on his shoulder. I mm-hmm. think they'll play their play in the slot or the nickel, and I think they'll do a really good job there. And it's year two. All the rookie mistakes are behind him. He's had 16 games under his belt. He has the New Orleans Saints playbook down. Chauncey is going to ball the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. All right, Evan, your turn. <laughs> My breakout player um... – <clears throat> A dark and stormy night. <laughs> go with, yeah, I don't know. I'm going go with a new one. I'm going to go with Emmanuel Sanders. Um, I think he's going to do good. Um, definitely not bad if he's not the breakout player, but I definitely think he's going to you know, bring what we need to the table. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he he is a wide receiver one. He was a wide receiver one in San Francisco. He only had 66 receptions. You know, Mike, Mike Thomas is wide receiver one in the ones, 130. Was 147, 150, 147, something like that. that. 149, I think it was. Yeah, it might. But I mean, like, even if like you know, Mike got like 80, you know, that would still give. No, it's sort of Sanders 60 as a wide receiver two, Mm -hmm. which is still good. Oh yeah. 
it's still a good amount of, you know, touches, you know, not nothing crazy, but still good for a wide receiver too, at least, you know, Jared Cook will get, you know, his probably 40, 50 touches. Mm-hmm. Alvin Latavius will do that thing in the run game, but I definitely think Sanders has the ability to have a breakout game. You know, it's kind of shocking because he's 33 years old, mm-hmm. but I, de- I definitely see him as a player that could break out and, you know, Bring what we need, basically. For sure. For a breakout candidate, in my eyes, I'm going with Alvin uh, Alvin Kamara. Uh, when you look at his tw- uh, stats since he joined the league in 2017, 2017 he had 120 attempts for 720, or, yeah, 728 yards, uh, five or eight touchdowns. Uh, 2018 was his best season by far. He had 194 attempts with 883 yards and 14 touchdowns which is absolutely insane, not even counting the four receiving touchdowns he had oh, and the 709 receiving yards. Dude, absolutely balled out. 2019, he had 171 attempts for 797 yards and five touchdowns. So in retrospect, he did have more yardage um, in 2019. It's just his average was down a little bit lower than his rookie year, which is why everyone said he had such a bad season. But when you look at it from – not only a fan, but an analytical perspective, you can tell that in looking at injury reports, Alvin Kamara was not 100% last year. Uh, when you go watch his highlights in against Houston and compare them to some of his highlights later in the season, you could just tell that he was missing a step. Something wasn't there. He had a tweaked ankle the entirety of the year. Um, he's even said it on Twitter. He was playing at what he would gauge himself as 70% of what he was capable of that 30% is a huge chunk, especially when he produced similar stats to what he did in 2018 and 2017, just without the touchdown. <laughs> and um, quite I think the, the loss, I think the had. loss of Mark definitely put an impact on his play. Yeah, I, I think really putting an emphasis on the run if Sean Payton chooses <clears throat> to do so this year, which as your quarterback ages would be the smart thing to do. Don't want to force Drew Brees to take as many um, hits or essentially throw as much. As, as he usually would. Um, I think Alvin Kamara is a huge breakout candidate this year just because, one, he's healthy. Two, he now has a huge chip on his shoulder. And three, he's capable of a lot. So, yeah, Alvin Kamara is definitely my candidate. Y'all got any honorable mentions? Davenport. Yeah. Davenport. <laughs> I love <clears throat> Davenport, dude. You know, Johnny I'm, I'm saying – Oh. I'm saying, I mean, like, I'm saying maybe five, six, seven sacks a season. I'm which expecting is a double good. digit sack, sack, uh, yeah. sack season. Bro, why are Actually, you? Why, wh- you want to honorable mention? Shy Tuttle. Shy Tuttle is going to. That's go a great one. But, but, Johnny, why are you? Why are you, He had six sacks last year. And Before he I got hurt, he that. went on a tear. I think he'll get six to eight sacks. No, double no, digits. double digits. He's getting 10. He's getting 10. He's, getting, He's 10. getting 10. I'm telling He's you right 10. now. Book it. Go back to this podcast about 45 minutes in <laughs> when he gets double digits next season. I bet. I told you. So I can look how cringy I look right now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Camara or Kamara? It's Camara. Like Camara. Camara. It's Camara. I just say Camara because I I can't say Camara. I've been saying Camara for three years, so that's just what comes out. I can't. I don't like Camara. I don't like Camara. <laughs> nah, Camara. I, 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 I heard Joe Buck, Buck said it. I couldn't listen to anything else he said. I just thought I heard it. Joe Buck say it one time in a game, and I'm just like, oh my god, dude, please don't say that. He anymore. said Camara. <laughs> Camara. Touchdown <laughs> after a juggle. Oh, and Camara, the rookie. Oh, my God. Oh, Against that Redskins. Redskins. Yeah, that was crazy. You know, I, I hope Malcolm Jenkins, when he comes into the team, he doesn't see Camara and just be like, oh, yeah, that dude burnt me last year. That dude that burnt me Kamara. last year. Burnt Jenkins, dude. He burnt him twice. Just one of them was called back because of Andrews Pete. Jenkins owes Sean Payton an apology. Mm. Dude, Jake, playing about running the sl- score up, sliding mm. five yards, Kamara's dragging him into the end zone. <laughs> oh, because the Eagle fans want to talk trash all day, Mm-mm. and and yeah. we're running up the score as they deserve to get the score ran they, up on they, them. They, they, oh, underdogs! Ugh, we're the underdogs. They thought they really had something to prove and got blown out. Got absolutely that, blown out. Time. Big time. That playoff game scared me. Oh yeah, they still. 
They still say to this yeah. day, oh, if, if Alshon Jeffrey catches the ball, we, we, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, we're winning the Super Bowl. Mm-mm. I'm just mm-hmm. like, first of all, you don't even know if you're going to win, score a touchdown. Second of all, who's to say you're not going to lose to the Rams the next week? Mm-hmm. I'm just – the Eagle fans piss me off more than the Cowboys fans. Eagles fans are terrible. Oh, bro. You want to get me started, bro? Tampa Bay fans are – I got yelled oh, at by – Oh, my God, God, bro. I got yelled at by – They don't have fans. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, well, they don't have they fans. Do. But when oh, you yeah. meet them, bro, when you go to a Tampa Bay game mm-hmm. and you sit there, bro, my first game was right behind or right in front of the cannons. Oh, was it really? <gasps> do, 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 yeah. do, do, do. I was. I, know what, I was. I had to put on earplugs at halftime, bro. I was like, yes, oh god, it's like, I could boom, not. Boom. Bro. That stuff was so loud. And they're cool though. They shouldn't. They are cool. Yeah, no, the thing is definitely cool, but like, oh, it just bothered me so much. And then like the fans, but the fans, I'm telling you, bro, these fans get drunk so bad mm-hmm. by halftime. They're all wobbling around everything. I'm just like, oh. My. Well, that's Florida for you. Yeah, I got. Uh, I was getting yelled at by these two old dudes because I was se- I went to a football game, right? And whenever something that would happen with my team, I would get excited and I would yell because I, at football games, that's what you do. Um, and every time I would yell, he'd be like, "Hey, shut up!" <laughs> and, and, uh, he was like, "Who who sold these tickets? Next year, I'm buying these seats too." I was like, "I'm not coming back to Tampa." Why would I come back here? I only did because of the Saints of Tampa game in, in New Orleans had already passed. Why would I come back? Bro, do you know the city Tampa of Tampa? Garbage. The, the city of Tampa is honestly so nice, bro. I can sit there and fish. The city? Stuff. The city, oh, dude, this is, city okay. is great. It's no, okay. no, no, no. It is the city okay is, Have you best. been to the city? Yes! Have you been to the city? I was literally the just in Tampa last terrible, year. Bro. It's Okay. I love the same thing. Okay. I can fish those bridges for snook all day. I can get some fire. Okay, fish, right fishing, now. fishing is different. The fishing there is insane. But like I, I the, was, the area where the stadiums out in Tampa is just like it's. No, so I heard diverse. Saint Petersburg is better. Saint Peter is definitely too. better. If you want, if you want like a forty inch snook, then Saint Peter is definitely your best bet. But if you're looking to get like a decent amount of snook, I can't relate to that. Either. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been either. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's where the southern comes out. Of you, bro. I, I do I tell you what, man. Hey, I got to I gotta get my controller next time. <laughs> <laughs> He's just playing a game. <laughs> my button's working, man. My button's working again. Yes! There you go. There you go. Let's go. Uh, I, I will look- tell you – I'm sorry. No, no, no bro. Go on. No, you go, bro. You, you, no, you start first. I, I was literally going to ask what other dumb shit do we have to bring up. Oh, I was going to say – okay, I was going to talk <laughs> about the – New. I was going to talk about New Orleans. Um, I've never I'm been. I'm not sure – Same. Have – have any of you guys? Have you been? Uh, any- I've been. I've been to New Orleans. I haven't. I've been. I took a picture outside the stadium. Um, that's really bad. I was only there for one night. I went to this fire restaurant called Nola Restaurant. Um, oh hell yeah, bro, man! They- dude, that that place has the best chicken I've ever had in my entire <laughs> life. Like, oh my gosh, that food is. So Y'all need good. to eat a damn po' boy. All of you need to try a po' boy. <laughs> I've I've that never is- been down there. I'm gonna try my hardest to go down this season. <laughs> Nas meetup, guys, coming soon. Dude, we're all having a meetup. We got to. We got to. Meet up in New Orleans. Don't get Hell me. yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm coming down there. I'm going to let everyone know. <laughs> I'll get y'all some hand grenades. Yes, sir. No, I can we get? Can we show. get like seven by seven photos that you signed for us with your face on them? No. <laughs> Why? <Yeah. laughs> Why? No. Like a Nas autograph, like a Barnes and Noble or something? No, no. Frame it no. in my room. Heck no. <laughs> Wait, on topic, what position do we draft in the first round? Linebacker. Linebacker. linebacker all day. Say linebacker. All day. I was going to say cornerback. <laughs> it's not like, it's said, not like crazy. I was like, I'd, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be fine with either. I just, you know, I see that the yeah, free yeah. agent cornerback class is a little bit deeper than the free agent linebacker class. I do not call my boy Kenneth Murray. Woo! Can I be honest with y'all? Can yeah. I be honest with y'all? Y'all are way more into the analysis of this shit than I am. I'm just How? keeping it real. How? I mean, I mean, like, no, no, no. Y'all seem to know what the hell y'all are talking about. Me, I'm just like, fuck, I can't wait for football season. I don't care about this <laughs> offseason shit. <laughs> I'm just ready for football. Like, no, I whoever, feel you. I, I told myself after the season, I'm not going to care who we get in the offseason because until we win a Super Bowl, that's – I want players who can finish games mm-hmm. and, and, and help us win. That's all I want. Well, I'm going to let you know right now, we need a linebacker. 
like yeah we desperately especially after losing aj klein dude oh my god it, it's it's a need for alexander sure. Lee. <laughs> <It's> even- <laughs> oh, bro we're gonna have craig robertson star i will kill no, myself no, i will no, kill no, myself no, no. so fast i swear to god I'm right, he, he had that, he had that one pick he had that one pick and everyone went nuts what <laughs> he went Fred Robertson starts a game. You have to kill yourself. You said yeah, it. I, he's so no. trash. He's so bad. He's so Dude, he had he had bad. that one pick, bro, and everyone went. Nuts. That was the that was such a lucky interception too. It, it really was. was. That's all it was. He was just lucky to be there at the right time. Yeah, I, I don't think bro, that was against San Francisco back in twenty uh, sixteen, right? That's the one you're talking about. No, nah, that was that was this that year. was this year. <laughs> <laughs> Which one did he have this year? Because I remember he had an interception against San Francisco back in um, Dang, he must have had an anniversary pick then because he had one against San Francisco this year too. It was like yeah. a little oh, tick yeah, that yeah, fell yeah. right I, into his that, hands. That wasn't Demario. I thought that was Demario Davis. And that was no, had, no, no, no. He, Demario had the one against Tampa where it bounced off O.J. Howard's hand. Oh, and yeah, just that, that happened to die. Yeah, like the air. Bro, that was weird. Yeah. That was weird. It was nice Gosh, though. You should have you caught some damn uh, videos, man. Ah, I know. Well, I, I wasn't, the, uh, I wasn't expecting that. N- collab with Nos. That was all I wanted. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, I caught some of the I caught some of the best moments and some, some of the, the worst. worst moments. Bro, I've went on your channel so many times and watched just sheer depression. Like, I've been like, oh my god, <laughs> why has Noah witnessed every negative moment ever <laughs> in my life? Saints lose to this. It's a five minute video. Of it going, reaction. Oh, come like, on, man. <laughs> Bro, I think I think Kamali Correa would even be a nice like if we had to go for linebacker and free agency, I think Correa would be a decent pickup in the free agency because he's twenty six. I'm going to be honest with you, Evan. I have no idea who that is. <laughs> he was from the Titans, bro. I have no idea who that is. Okay, Correa's from the Titans, bro. He's one of the Titans starting linebackers of free agency this year. Good. I he's twenty six years old. He's, he's not young. that old, but he's not. He's definitely not that young. He's definitely got some experience under his belt. He yeah, plays at a, a good like, level. I think he'd be. Solid. I think he'd be a. I think it'd be an upgrade from AJ Klein, who decided to go to Buffalo and freeze for some reason. I just love but, AJ Klein <laughs> and his family, Why? man. AJ Klein's wife, um, she's a very nice person. Her Instagram was like um, mm. all for hugs, or, all or for hugs social or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't really mess with social media, but the player's social media like that. Not often. All I know is Michael Thomas is annoying. We talked know. about so we said we all said linebacker. He said corner. But then now, linebacker. So, we covered the draft, what we're going to use a first-round pick on. I just don't want fucking uh, Patrick Robinson and P.J. Williams. Yeah, they're both the trash, dude. But I don't think I don't think P.J. will be back. I, we haven't resigned him yet. <laughs> I don't are. want Patrick Robinson. I don't think we are. I don't think we're going to resign him. I don't think we're going to. I'm surprised sucks. we haven't gotten Taysom back yet. Who the fuck is going to go well, for first-round pick for him? Yeah, we put a first round tender on. Doesn't that extend him for another year? It gives him, yeah, it gives him one year. One year. And then we'll, probably, we'll probably sign him after that, just because you know Drew's going to retire. Hold on. I swear to God, a first round tender gives us another year. It's a one. It's a one year, four point seven three million dollars. I think. I think. Wait, you're then right. what's the point of the first round? I don't get it. If someone decides to sign it's Taysom, just, they so have to give us a first round pick. Uh, yeah, let's yeah, say. Uh, yeah, let's yeah, say yeah, New yeah, England. Yeah, let's yeah, say yeah, New England yeah, says. Yeah. Hoyer's not our answer, and we need a corner. Let's say we need a quarterback. Four point four point six four one million dollars. Six four one. Exact. I was close. Still pretty expensive, honestly. It's like the easiest contract. (laughs) Hey, it's better than the seven point two five we paid for Teddy last year. We did pay seven million for Teddy. Seven point two seven. Hey, that that was worth five wins. Uh, it was worth Teddy's it. overrated. It Teddy's overrated. Okay, seven million He's for so five wins. He's so overrated. He's so overrated. If the team would have decided to play like they played, him, like, and now that he leaves the team, oh, he's overrated. Oh. No, he's overrated. Oh, he is. But like the team they around, they will him better. Oh, my fault. Yeah, no, you're you're right. No, the team I'm, I'm, that, better. that was my fault, Johnny. I I talked over you on purpose because I was eager to to fucking say what I had to say. I'm sorry, <laughs> my fault. <laughs> You, know you go, Johnny. I probably talked over you and Evan. Like, I literally apologized <laughs> in the Discord when we had to make our little. It's wife. all right, bro. It's uh, all love, man. It's all love. All I'm saying, bro, all I'm saying is Tom Brady can go 0 and 16 for the next two years in Tampa and still get his 60 million fully guaranteed. And what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bro, it's, it's two, fully years, guaranteed. Six, 
Two years, 60 million, fully guaranteed, no trade clause. He can go 0 and 16, throw it out of bounds every single play. And still get oh, they're going to be good. Like, I don't know. And why they can't cut him. They can't cut him or trade him. Tampa's going to be good. nice. Let's talk about the division. Let's end the it off division, on the division. Yeah. Let's talk about the division. What Thanks. do y'all think about the division? Thanks. Tampa's got a good offense. Panthers. But the defense definitely needs some work. Carolina's just – they're Carolina I, Christian McCaffrey's. I'm going to keep it I think Carolina – I'm sorry. The Falcons are <laughs> doing them, still doing them. Falcons. What? Falcons? What? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean. I really think Atlanta could probably finish in last place this year. I oh, really – I, I, I feel – Listen, Carolina, for as bad as they look as a team all around, oh, they don't have any wide receivers around Teddy Bridgewater. All they have is Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore. Mm-hmm. And Curtis Samuel, if they, yeah, I think they still got Curtis Samuel. That's a, Curtis solid. Samuel. That's a pretty solid receiver court. Their, their defense is not yeah. bad. Well, yeah, Keekly was a huge, yeah, Keekly was a huge yeah. loss for them. Um, um, but sure. that's something they could assess in the draft, though. They could get um, a solid Brad, Bradbury went to New York. Oh, yeah, they're going to get Simmons probably. Yeah. Bradbury's gone. I think, I think gone. Carolina is a, is a pretty nice sleeper team. If, they, yeah. if, if Teddy does his thing in, like he did in New Orleans and doesn't throw a lot of interceptions, they could be pretty good, especially with Christian McCaffrey. If he can move the ball down the field, I think his average depth of pass was like six yards last year, which was lowest in the NFL. So as long as he uh, throws – Decent balls, catchable balls. He has a nice receiving core to work with and a great running back. His their offense could be solid. It's just the defense I'm worried about for Carolina. Yeah, did, they, did they lose? Did they lose Trey Boston or no? They no, they resigned yeah. him, I believe. They resigned oh. him with that because mm-hmm. um, he's a good player. The only reason I don't count out Atlanta now they gave up <laughs> a lot of people, but what did they win? Like seven in a row at the end of the season. I think it was a That's the season. only reason. I think they'll be bad, but, like, you can't count out seven wins to top off a season. Wait, who did that? Atlanta, right? Atlanta. They won, like, six. Oh, out of yeah. Back. They went on a really big spree. Like, yeah. The year. They won Just because lot. Dan Quinn is the worst head coach, they're like, here, stop playing our defense. And then they're like, oh, we're actually not bad. Atlanta, New Orleans, and Tampa Bay are going to fight for the division. The Bucks will be good. Uh, it, it's going to be a fight. Like it, it those division yeah. games are going to be stupidly important next the year. The Bucks will mm. be good. Their you defense don't think is shit, hmm? but Chris Godwin at a fucking wide receiver too. We won't know how to cover him. No, nah, Chris Godwin right. definitely a receiver. One. But who's gonna who's gonna cover Michael Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders though? Yeah, that's the thing. Their defense plus is Jared good. Cook plus Alvin Kamara, yeah. Latavius. If you really want to go, you know, put some two running backs out there. It's really a coin flip for me. If if Carolina is good, if they are, that is going to suck so bad. I don't think they will. Be. I mean, the seventeen playoff starts next year, not the seventeen game. The mm-hmm. seventeen playoff starts yeah, next, starts year. next year. Everyone's going oh, with me man. one. Everyone's going to be fighting for that one seed. Let's change them. Yay. Imagine if uh, both – wait, how many wild card spots are there going to be now? What does that change? There's going to be three – there's going to be three wild card spots and four division leaders, one by week team. So, imagine if the Saints, <clears throat> Falcons, and Panthers went to the playoffs somehow. What would that be like? What about the Bucks? You're, you seem like you're counting out the Bucks. Did I say the Falcons? Sorry, I meant Saints, Falcons, and Bucks. Saint, Saints, yeah, Saints, Falcons, and Bucks. Sorry, I didn't mean to say Panthers. Yeah, they so like a, <gasps> No, think, 44 died. Ah. <laughs> uh, rip. Well, yeah, yeah. I was just about be, to end he'll it be back. soon. Because we've been, I, see, I think, over an I see, hour now. I see the Bucks taking yeah. a wild card spot at best. Yeah, I, mean, I think they're gonna, they're gonna they're going to the playoffs. The Buccaneers. I think this. I think the Saints and the Falcons are really going to be like. If the Falcons can get their shit together, I think the Saints and the Falcons can actually fight for that top spot in the division. But – oh, what's up, 44? But, uh, I, had, I, had I see – My AirPods died, and once I put them back in the case, I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the Saints can – I think the Saints can – I guess it's the Saints teams, division to lose. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Listen, it's, it's definitely our division to lose. We're the most talented <clears> team in the division, even with Brady. Mm-hmm. The Bucks, I feel like, are a hit or miss. 
Okay. Yes, very much so. I yeah, expect definitely. them to be a ten-win team, okay? Mm-hmm. But whether they're going to be elite, like thirteen wins, I I don't know if I'm going to put them up there. I just no. I don't know. Mm-mm. We don't even know how Brady's going. Brady has never played with any other coach other than Belichick. Exactly. This is where we yeah. find out if he's a system QB or not. We look at last year's numbers. Brady wasn't that bad. I'm pretty sure his depth of pass was absolutely terrible. Um, you watch any Patriots game last year, you see James White getting 11,466 receptions in one game. It is insane. He, he was a he was the king of dump-offs. And that that's, that's where you try to, like, think, was it <laughs> – his age, is he just not as good anymore? Did he fall off a cliff? Did Bad. Bob time catch up? Bad. Or was it his lack of talent around him? Bad. I've, Bad. I've Bad. always Bad. known Tom Brady, Tom Brady back in the day as a player, as a quarterback that could throw to anybody, kind of like Drew Brees is. He could throw – Drew Brees threw, what, how many touchdowns to how many different undrafted receivers in a game against Atlanta Thanksgiving the other year? Five. I think it was five, Seven. five, four to undrafted um, wide receivers. Dan Arnold. It was insane. Dan he th- Arnold. He's thrown oh, to players like gosh. Dan Arnold, Austin Carr, Keith Kirkwood. He's made Keith Kirkwood look real good. Um, who else? Josh Hill has been a, a prominent wi- uh, tight end on this team for years now because of Drew Brees. So can Tom Brady – is he still good? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know if Brady's good. I enough. think – I think he'll go back to, like, maybe not all the way back to what he was, but definitely back up there. Now he's got a good receiving core. He's got Evans. He's got Godwin. Um, Par- or Paraman, I say, if they want to resign – if they do resign him. But, like, in New England, all he really had was Edelman, you know. And Edelman's yeah, not the he, biggest dude, so, you know, he didn't really have much to throw to. Coin toss. Yeah. Sleepy. All they're right, not, boys. Tampa's not bringing back uh, – they're not bringing in Antonio Brown talks. So that'll be a plus for us. This has been great, but I think we've reached the hour cutoff. We've covered a lot today. Yeah, definitely. I think it's time to head out. Do this again sometime, question mark? <laughs> yes. hey, let us know yeah. down in the comments. You yeah, know. yeah. Let us know if we need to do this again or not. It's all really Johnny nice. support comments are the best comments. <laughs> I will You're read all idiot. of them. Uh yeah. No, right, well, but, let uh, us know if you want to be a guest in the uh, in the next one. If you mm-hmm. want to keep this going, for sure. Discord okay. link, Nas. Put the Discord link down below if you want. And we'll get better doing this. I mean, yes, I'll get yeah, it'll get here. easier. <laughs> I'll stop sitting time. in my chair like this every two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to be more active and not phase out like every <laughs> twenty seconds. We'll, we'll be talking about football, and he'll be. <laughs> 30 Playing minutes into a game of Madden, <laughs> sitting there on his controller. <laughs> You're like, uh, 44? <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for coming on. It was a blast. We'll see yeah, you boys in the next Make one. Make sure to sub to this guy, this Adios. guy. Yeah, sub, to, sub Johnny and uh, 44's links will be in the description. Sadly, Evan doesn't have a channel, but maybe in sometime. Hey, whenever sub to Mark 4, guys. So <laughs> yeah. Sub to Mark 4. Sub to Mark 4. All right, peace out, everybody. Peace out, Adios. guys.